Hi, I'm Shabby Doo, and you're watching BDTV. It's family, so we're back once again this week, and we're joined by another special guest, and it's TIU True M11. What's good, family? What's happening with you, man? Yeah, man, I'm chilling right now, so it's definitely good to have you on the platform because um, I followed your music and stuff for a, for a while, but it's good to uh, be able to chop it up with you so we can get to know a little bit more about you. Yeah, that's, that's what's up, man. You know, get you some more in-depth on what, you know, what was going on with TRU, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm after, at off top, I was going to say I'm definitely feeling the, the um, TRU gear that you're sporting right there. Yeah, I gotta represent, man. That's you know, that's the home team, man. So it's like you know, Alexa, his daughter, it, it's her clothing line. She gets, she getting put out there. So we all support that, and that's what's happening. You heard me? Gotta support the home team. Okay. Well, we definitely got some questions in regards to C. We definitely want to say free C, and it's free C till they free C. C's recently, you know, came out and it shed some light on the corruption that's going on within the prison systems and released a new album, which we'll get to. But to start off with yourself, um, for the fans, give us a bit of an introduction to how you started out and where did you start? Uh, I mean, pretty much it just started like we all came up in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Anybody you see affiliated with No Limit, you pretty much grew up under our same little neighborhood. You got, you got Mac, you got Fiend, you got um, VG, Soldier Slim. All of us went to the same elementary school. You know, Stan Canoe, you know, the R.I.P. to Canoe. And um, we all great. We all came up in the same neighborhood around Jim Taylor, Germany. You got the Magnolia down the street. You got the Calio. Six blocks down, you know, so everything was small, so it's a small circle. So we all knew each other. KFC stayed around the corner on, on the parkway. So it was like, it was always us coming up like that, right? So, like I said, as we got older, you know, we were always dealt with the music. Me and Soldier Slim, we did, you know, it was Magnolia Slim. I gotta correct that because that came. Got locked up in. 96. So 96, that's when the No Limit thing was first kicking off. So pretty much, I, I was gone from 96 to 98. So I missed that whole, I missed them two years right there with the whole No Limit thing was popping up. So I kind of missed, I know I missed my beginning right there. So I ended up uh, um, coming home in 98. And um, if I don't respect me, uh, Dodo came home. All right, so Dodo was home. I messed with a guy named Victor. You know what I'm saying? Victor was the guy that pretty much put the finances behind tough guys. Like it, it was, you know, it was street affiliated, but that really put it, you know, cause he had that affiliation with Master P, with him and Dodo. You know what I'm saying? If you heard uh was that a Ghetto Hero, yeah, you'll hear about you hear about when he said Victor in the song. You know what I'm saying? So that was like a you know, yeah. I yeah, would definitely right. have Marcelo uh, definitely shout out Vic and Doe and a lot of stuff for that as well. Yeah, man, Marcelo, that's my that's my big home, you know, that's my people. And we like uh, um it started from up, you know, like we all like I said, we all went to school together, we everything was all poetry. And uh I came home with like I wasn't trying to go nowhere in the streets no more. I wasn't trying to do the hustle shit. I'm like, I'm about to get I'm about to get with no limit or something, you know, I'm gonna get on somewhere. So I came home and uh, it was just pretty much it. Things was still moving, but it was like, you know what I'm saying? It was just, you know, it was kind of shaky, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, it's like asking them if they hiring or something, you know, like you hiring, you're like, man, we, we full right now, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hey, can you, you know? can you recall what, um, what time, um, that, what time this was, the, like, um, was it in 2000s or something? What? Uh, what, like the date was it in the 2000s period? No, nah, this was, no, nah, this was 98. Okay, ninety eight. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was ninety eight going to ninety nine. So like I say, uh ninety eight it was pretty much it was still it was still blocks until you got the hoodie hood, all that type of stuff was popping all around that time. Okay. So um you couldn't really you know, like I said, I I take trips with, with Mac or something, we'll go to Bad Rudge and you know, I go to parties and things like that, but I never actually got affiliated with that. So what ended up that's that's the separation between me and no limping because I was with tough guy. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you heard anything about that situation, you wasn't tied to no limping. You were signed directly to priority. You see what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, that's why 
I speak the way I speak about shit because I don't have that connection. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I wasn't connected to directly to uh, Pete. I was connected to tough guy. You see what I'm saying? So that's why that the way it is. And you know, so it, it's a lot of things. You know, I know you got more questions. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a I'm, yeah, I'm no. just feel it as we go. Yeah, no, definitely. I was gonna say, speaking of tough guys, man. Um. What was that like? Um, how that formed together? We see Marcelo, we dropped the Brick Living album, and then you know there was a lot of other artists that were advertised that they said they were going to release. Um, how come we didn't see, you know, more on a mainstream level from the label? I mean, you probably, you pretty much, you know, you pretty much know what the uh, what the demise of that was, and that was uh, we lost total. And uh, and at the time, you got you dealing with a time when. Uh, with all this, all this is going on. Like you got the first person was uh was Mac, you know when Mac got incarcerated, just like what two thousand, you know what I'm saying. So like just like at the pinnacle, like when we started with the five hundred four bar, he was affiliated with that with Marcelo. So we pretty much did everything on his coattails. So we was like, man, look, you take you got you got the driver's seat right now. We are gonna just fall in line, like you know it's loyalty. So all we did was just fell in line with with Cello and follow what what he wanted to do. So we just kept moving, man. And priority, we had a direct link to priority. So we ain't had to go through people for, for everything we wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? So everything started dismantling around that time. So you can, if you understand, people people start walking away and you know, a lot of things start happening. So that pretty much was it. Because that was like the beginning of everything. Like 2000, everything started, started shifting. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, a lot, a lot of things start changing. Because you start, you start seeing less of people. And you start, you know, you start seeing us more in the neighborhood talking about, like, man, what about this? And when, so a lot of things happen. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> so so that was coming, the beginning. For, in that time, was we heard that there was, um, like, a video shoot that was done in the Magnolia and the Calio with um, Marcelo and Tough Guys for the Habra. Song was yeah, seeing your stuff there. Was he was you was he there with that? Yeah, I mean I'm actually in the video. But uh, you know, we we pretty much just like I say, if I go back to it, bro, it was all street politics, like you know what I'm saying? Like we all knew each other from the Cali or the Magnolia. I grew up like I said, I grew up in a neighborhood that was like two like three blocks down from the Magnolia. So I, I used to hang in the Magnolia. So I don't, I don't have that same, I don't have that same feeling for it because I grew up with people in the Cali and I grew up with people in the Magnolia. So my grandma stayed in, in, in the Cali. So I had to be affiliated, you know, I, I grew up with these dudes. So I had love for them. So I never got involved in the Cali or Magnolia. But all I did was most likely like we helped put them together. You know what I'm saying? Because we gave them that security. They'd be like, man, look, we need, y'all coming back up. If you don't, we gonna make sure ain't shit out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But stop, you know, like yeah, you can't really stop it. But we, they did it, and like it, it was something that was pretty much done because uh, when it's money involved, and when you when you got people that want to get out the hood, like you gotta understand, they didn't want we didn't want to do that street shit no more. No more, we wanted to get out the street. Now like, people gotta understand that, like we really wanted to get out the street. So. You, you tend to do certain things. So now, if you got a whole beef going on, it was willing to put that aside. You know what I'm saying? Just to, let's make, let's make this money. Let's make this legit money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This legal money that we about to get involved in. Let's not, let's get out the hood, man. And that's what happened. We all came together. It made it happen. Yeah, it was definitely a dope video and a dope look and stuff as well. Um, you know, what one, one of the other things I heard in a Marcelo interview before was um he said there was a song he was trying to get P and Birdman and stuff out of it as well. So he was trying to, you know, really bring everybody together. And I always saw tough guys as that as that sort of link kinda in between no limit and cash money where, you know, because even as the fans, I think everybody could kinda guess that Y'all were all kind of from the same sort of environment somewhat and some people knew each other and that. But um, with that being said, Tough Guys to me kind of came across as like a bridge in between, you know. With that being said, did you have much of a relationship with like Cash Money and, you know, a lot of the Cash Money artists as well? Yeah, I mean, we all, like I said, I was in intermission school with Beach. So we all came up together. Like that, That's the whole thing. We all was... We was we, we pretty much was the wedge in between because we was more like 
we, you know, we had the understanding about everything. Like, we, they knew us, we knew them. So, like I said, I was supposed to be affiliated with No Limit, but you'll hear me playing, you'll hear me playing the black guitar by Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? I can play what the fuck I want with my truck. You see what I'm saying? So, we had love for them. So, if all people, you know, like I say, if we pull up somewhere and we see one of them, we don't, he's gonna holler like they always been hollering. You know what I'm saying? So it never been no no conflict with us. It was like, you know, that was on a higher that was on a higher level, you know what I'm saying? With with that going on. But, but as for us, I was able to go to any one of them. You know, I was need to talk to anybody in that clique, you know what I'm saying? I was able to walk up to them, talk to them. And that's what pretty much kinda of helped that to happen. Like it could have happened, but it was just a it was just a powers that be, man. You know that no, <laughs> it won't let it just won't let it happen, man. Yeah, no, definitely. There's always some politics and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, with that being said, you know, switching forward, at what point would you continue to, we know you would stay, you know, connected with the No Limit fam and seeing stuff, but at what point would you go on to then, you know, solidify your relationship with True Records and become a True Records artist? And what was that like? I mean, pretty much it was like, like I said, uh, we was at the, at the time when we were dealing with Marcelo on the second album. So it was tough guys, we were still tough guys when we were dealing with Cello on the second album. And that's when Dodo got killed. So when Dodo got killed, it was like, we didn't know where to go. Like, I ended up going back in the streets a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I got to make some money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I ended up going back to what I knew. And uh, see, you know, like I said, I got to give up to, you know, to Corey Miller, man. I got to get up to see Murder because he took us under like, all right, come over to here. You see what I'm saying? So he's, you know, he came around us to like, I'm going to help y'all out. You know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna to make this happen with TRU. You know what I'm saying? So that was love. What was that bringing in um, currency and that as well at the same time? Yeah, he brought, I mean, like I said, I ended up getting incarcerated. So <laughs> I ended up leaving again for, for a year and a half. You know what I'm saying? For like 2002 to 2003. So it was like two thousand, like, like like yeah, like right 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 the end of the beginning of two thousand two, I got locked up, and um I ended up coming back out like in late two thousand three, oh, right wow. before Soldier Slim, right before Soldier Slim got killed. That's when I, I just came home. So it's like my my, it's like the whole timeline, man, was crazy, and um, it's one of those things, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it was just that that's what's surrounding us, man. Like a lot. Of, a lot of debt was happening, you know what I'm saying? So you had to get yourself around that vibe, and that's what we were stuck on. But um, see, you know, see, really did his part, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, right after that happened, when he got, he took in currency, he took in a few tough guy members, and uh, he got, he ended up getting locked up. So that knocked that, you know, that pushed that to the side. So that was like, you know, it was just event happening at the event. And if people, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna let you know this. So people don't know a lot, you know, a lot of people don't talk about it, but we really was being, you know, we really was being like pointed out. Like we really was being, it was just, it was messing us for no reason. Like the police was just putting us through a lot of things for no reason because they knew our affiliation. You know what I'm saying? And that was just like a crazy thing. Was, you know, I don't, they talk about the hip hop police and I think it's real. You know what I'm saying? Because like I got it, I, I ended up getting locked up on some stupid shit, and um, a lot of my partners did. Like a lot of us got caught up in a lot of you know police situations that we could have, you know, that, that wouldn't, that shit not happen. In other words, so that made me want to just not deal with Louisiana completely because it's corrupted, man, for real. Yeah, no, we definitely heard a lot of stuff, and you know, recently C Murders reported on. Um, some of the criminality and stuff and the corruption that's going on within the judicial system and spreading light on how they've been treating inmates that are incarcerated, especially during these times of the pandemic. So um, we definitely know that corruption is still at a high and um, people are still being falsely incarcerated for stuff as well. Um, you know, one of the things that you just mentioned, it led me, you know, to recall at one point you released a song which was entitled Letter to Master P. What led you to write that song and at what time was this? Can you speak a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i gonna give y'all the real because a lot of people, you know, they misconstrued a lot of things that happened with that. You know what I'm saying? They might call you this, they might call you that, call you a hater, whatever you do. But uh, 
if, if y'all know the situation, the situation was like this. Um, you know, she was incarcerated. And uh, we had, at the time, he, he reached out. You know what I'm saying? He reached out to us. But we ended up having a meeting. I'm not, I mean, you know, we was in Houston. So we had we had a meeting with uh with one of his with one of his artists that came down and uh so we had a sit down talking about it and he wanted to combine two records with uh No Limit at the uh No Limit uh the new No Limit whatever whatever it was it was uh, No Limit forever right okay. yeah so they wanted to combine them together like it was like yeah we trying to put this together and everything. So I'm like, okay, I said, let me, you know, let me talk to C. Like, I got to let, you know, I'm going to let C call. C called me, and um, I asked him about it. I said, man, you know, they talking about, you know, little Romeo about to start this, you know, you about to start this label, and uh, she want us affiliated with it, like that. So C was like, ah, I don't, I don't feel too good about it. You know what I'm saying? So I had to tell him no, right? So I told C because uh, if you know who Rasheen is, Rasheen after Magnolia, that's my homie. That that was his cousin that I was talking to. So I told him I'm gonna do a favor for him because that's your cousin. You see what I'm saying? So I did a favor for him and that's to get him to perform at the House of Blue in Houston. That was key first show with that you know with that new label. All right, I hooked I hooked up that you know that show. Okay. So it was more of a personal, yeah, it was more of a personal thing more than it being a label thing because we we set up our, you know, we set up our situation where we got to get paid. You know, that's a show. So this is what you know. I mean, just to put it out there, you know, we did the show. I performed on the show. And, um, but I still wanted to get finished together. So after the show, I'm like, you know, what tickets will sell? What's going on? And, they kind of like, oh, we ain't selling enough tickets, we ain't do this. So they kind of played around with the money. So I felt some, I felt some kind of way about that. I just had a conversation with me up in the dressing room about C, you know, about some personal stuff. And the way he brushed it off, I kind of felt like, I felt, you know, like I felt hurt about the shit because I was looking at it like, damn, like that's the way you feel. Like, so I felt I had to say something because I was dealing with a lot of emotion at the time. I was dealing with, the fact that C locked up, we got these situations going on. We left. We're trying to, you know, re- revive true right now because it's, it's at limbo right now. So we sitting back like, damn. And he keeps saying, you know, doing these interviews. So we just sitting back like, you know, if you notice, you ain't seen nothing going on with TRU because we set, you know, we put ourselves aside to let C deal with his appeals and everything. So we stopped, we stopped doing show, we stopped doing everything. We started doing videos, we stopped making music. I mean, I still continue making music, but we didn't put nothing out, in other words. We just sat back and let things, let him deal with his legal situation. So for that to happen, that was kind of like, it was kind of disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? So me just speaking on it, I spoke on it to get his attention. Meaning that if you're not paying attention, if you're too busy to pay attention, you're going to pay attention to this. So I dropped that song because all these people that I, I grew up with. So we talk about Soldier Slim, we talk about Mac, we talk about all these people that was incarcerated. I'm speaking for them. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not able to speak. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason I did that. To get his attention. To let get you to understand that. Look, no limit still exists. You know what I'm saying? Now you got the new no limit, but the old no limit still exists. And there's these people that's that's around me. So yeah, I did. I, I did the song again with it, and it definitely got his attention. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask you if it did. Uh, if you got any uh, feedback from it? Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make you laugh, man. Uh, Lil one, Lil one called. You know, that Lil one called me uh, like right after I dropped this song, and uh, he said, "Man, he saw it. He's like he saw it, man. He wants you to take it down." I said, "Man, I ain't taking that song down. <laughs> hey, you tripping? Like I'm just, I ain't taking it down. Like." Why? Why you want me to take it down for? Because you don't want, you know, you don't want to see, you don't want his name, you know, you think he's going to be stained or something? Nah, you, you got your money, man. You good. You know what I'm saying? And that's just real. You know what I'm saying? I can't look at it no other week. So we had our own fan base. Like, true, you know, True Records had their own fan base anyway. So I wasn't trying to gain any recognition off of him. You know what I'm saying? So this was just like a direct line. Like, I couldn't talk to you on the phone. Well, this is the way I'm going to talk to you. 
And I think I remember at the time it was like, um, if I remember rightly, quite a few other rappers that did like, you know, songs like that in a sense as well. So it's not uncommon to have like uh, a song title that way, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, man, like a lot of, I mean, you get mixed, you get mixed feelings when you deal with that. Like, like I say, people, they look at things a certain way and you can't really, you can't really judge it when you're on the outside of it. You know what I'm saying? You got people that was actually in the inside of everything that was going on. So when people challenge challenge me and be like, man, man, you don't know this and this. I'm like, man, I was in that circle. Like, I wasn't with Master P, but I was in the circle. So me being in the circle, you discover a lot of things. I've talked to a lot of people. So it's like, it's crazy that somebody would just, you know, just uh, being a fan or being whatever, they don't want to see the bad side of anything. I think like, Oh man, how y'all falling out? Man, y'all, y'all, nah, man, it happened. It's yeah, life. Yeah. It's you know life. what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, it's life. You know, like, how many, how many, how many rappers you see who had bad contracts? You had a lot of rappers. Uh, you know, almost, had bad almost contracts. all of them. <laughs> right. So it's, it's not, it's not nothing that's, that's being lied about. It's just real shit. But I don't, I don't want them to be. You know, if they don't speak on it, I'm not gonna speak on it. That's not my place to do. You see what I'm saying? But I know what I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So me knowing yeah. what I know, I'm not gonna hold I'm not gonna hold all that shit in. I'm gonna let it out sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. that's what happened. But um, you know, as far as that, man, it was just like it, like you said, that's man, it's getting to the point where I was like twenty years ago. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like yes, I mean so it's now it's getting people getting tired of hearing this shit now. Like why why I talk about it twenty years late, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. Hey, it is what it is, man. But all I can do, you know, I'm living, I'm living for my family. So I take care of my, my kids. I think even, you know, you just saying that we're looking at like the history and stuff of, you know, No Limit and TIU, that's something that, as you said, you know, 20, 30 years, however much later, in some cases, still being so, you know, polarizing that the fans are, you know, still discussing albums that dropped, you know, 20 years ago, or, you know, we've seen like some that come up on the 23rd year anniversary and stuff like that. But in terms of new music, we've seen it recently, a new release from C Murder, which um, has been quite, you know, stirred up the media quite a bit in some senses. Have you, well, I'm guessing you've checked it out. What are your thoughts on, on this new album? Man, I mean, I mean, I, I got to give him salute, man. Like, I mean, this dude is a real soldier. Like, he really fighting for his life. And, and that's why, I mean, I limit my, my conversation of that. Because I want him to get out. You know what I'm saying? So me wanting him to get out, I'm I'm going to respect his his space and let him know that, like, if I talk to him, I talk to him briefly, we talk. I don't want to talk about anything really that's too, too, you know, too digging too deep into what's going on. With because I really want him to, to come home. You know what I'm saying? I'm so not. I got to respect his wish. You know what I'm saying? Like, we talk, I, I, I can talk about so much stuff, meaning that I still got to respect what he said. If he asks me, like, man, look, you know what I'm on, You know, I'm trying to get this done, I'm trying to get that done. Well, you can say no more. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand. I didn't drop an album since 2012. And uh, I'm about to drop an album this year. You know what I'm saying? Because it just, like I say, it's been off the respect and the loyalty I have. For him, like okay, I'm gonna respect that. We gonna lay low, even though I could have did plenty of things, could have did plenty of interviews. But it's just the fact that I had to respect his wish. So now he came. <laughs> if you heard the album, <laughs> it's all coming out. You know what I'm saying? He, he's that. That's what he wanted to do at his own time, at his own pace. You know what I'm saying? So I had to start understanding that because at one time I used to jump the gun a lot and be like, all right. Man, 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 he talking about us. Oh, let's go. You know what I'm saying? But now I got to understand, he the one that's in jail. You know what I'm saying? Corey Miller's in jail. So I got to respect everything that's going on with him. So if he asks me, don't talk about this, don't talk about that, I got to respect his wish. So salute to my big dog, man, Corey Miller. Yeah, most definitely. And how do you feel, like, I'll ask you, like, the me you know, the media, the part that the media plays in, like, because, you know, we've seen even recently C's spoke out about some of the stuff that's going on in the prisons, but he's asked for, like, the press to help spread the information, but then sometimes you get people that say if you put certain stuff out, it 
it, um, it hurts these case. So, you know, I think there's some sometimes people could be a bit confused and watch, not sure what stance what to take sometimes. Even with some of the fans at one point, we were saying, uh, people say call him Corey Miller or call him C. Miller. If you call him C. Miller, it hurts his case. But as we've seen with his new album, he said, you know, I'm already in this situation. You know, I need to fight it. And, um, you right. know, these people to fight with him. Nah, I mean, he's tired, man. He's tired of being in there, man. Like, you got to understand, he's tired. Like, how long you want somebody just to, you know, he's tired. You know, when you get tired, man, you don't, you don't care about all the other shit. And I understand it. You know, like I see, I gave him all the space he needed, man. And I don't, I don't speak too much about it. Like, we, man, he did what he wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? So respect his mind. You gotta respect his mind. Cause like I said, ain't no rapper ever did it. You name any rapper in history, he's the only rapper ever done it. You know what I'm saying? And once he come home, he's gonna be the only rapper ever done it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Period. It's not gonna be another person like him. You know what I'm saying? He a, he, he a special kind of, you know, kind of person, bro. And Damn. people don't understand that. Like, people more, be more caught up on what they see on TV or what they hear in the raps. They hear the music and they talk about, yeah, man, he, Man, he know he know know he thought that man. Look, that's music, that's entertainment. You see what I'm saying? You don't know that person in real life. What's in their heart? What's in their spirit? You know? Yeah. That's the message I gotta give for people, man. Stop judging people off of basic appearances and what they look like, what they spit about, because all that shit can just be a, a diversion. You know what I'm saying? Just to get your attention. You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, once you talk to me, you don't know. Nobody don't know what the fuck I did in the street. But I don't speak on it. I speak on it in my music now. Because that time is gone. You see what I'm saying? But you got to understand, man. Look, you can't judge a book by its cover all the time. And that's just what it is. So, uh, so I hope y'all get the message, dog. But just chill out sometimes. Sometimes you can be... Sometimes you can be an extra thing. Like, sometimes you can go too far, like... If we talk about that, we talk about Mac. You know what I'm saying? Mac K just came home. You want to put an album out the, the first month he come home? He just came home. He just did 21 years. Let him be home right now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Don't talk about yeah. Let him let him enjoy his life right now being on the outside. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I can say about that, man. That's that's the homeboy. Yeah, I know that's you know real. Man. And we've had so, it even the same. A lot of people, oh, you know. Get message back, see if you can get this, get get that. I'm with like you people, you know. Let, you should be happy that the guy's home after um after so many years, you know, getting to be just with his freedom and stuff, man. Yeah, man, real talk. And um, people going, you know, it'll come back around. Like I say, man, look, I understand, but I need you to understand. That's the whole point. I need them to understand that that like, the way it is. Sometimes you, know, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you know. You gotta get out there zone sometimes and just understand a person as who, who they are. You know what I'm saying? So once you know that, and then you'll be like, man, he ain't what I thought he was. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, people won't hear what they won't hear. You know, if they hear something in a song, yep. they won't, they, you know, they, they won't see you and, and, and see that image that, 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 that they post in their head. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you got these little rappers these days, they getting locked up left and right because they trying to portray that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, that's not what's up, but they, yeah, they think they gotta keep up to it. But um, switching forward from that, then I guess um, what could we expect from you going forward? And you, I know you mentioned some new music and stuff like that, and um, you know, giving people a bit more in-depth understanding to some of your stories. As you said, you can speak on some stuff a bit more in some of the the music. You've definitely laid down. Like to me, I always seen you with like. I want to like, compare you to, let's say, like a BG, but having a similar sort of that laid back kind of flow and cadence and stuff in some aspects, and um, and definitely hitting those hard hitting sort of street stories, just the way you got that laid back persona and stuff. Um, what could we, you say we got to expect from you musically coming? I mean, pretty much, man. It's like this. I always get that, man. Like that's one of my. That's like a gift and a curse when they say, uh, they say BG. Okay. Because, I was hoping I was insulting yeah, like you by saying that. Right? <laughs> if you hear me talking, like I said, we, we sound similar. I, I can hear same, you see your voice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We from the same place, man. Like we from uptown. You know, uptown is like our lingo is the same. We got the same lingo. We don't got the same 
call it. But the whole thing is, it's like it, it get mis you know misconstrued sometimes. But I did do a song called "Been a Rider," where I'm, I'm pretty much doing a, a tribute to BG, and um, I got that on YouTube. That's the video I did with the um, GTA, you know, with the Grand Theft Auto cartoon type thing on it. So that's like y'all go check that out. True Emmy Eleven. That's the uh, the YouTube channel, and uh, that's yeah. also the Instagram. So. Yeah, I seen the Check GTA. I seen that GTA clip. That was hot. But yeah, continue, brother. Yeah, I mean, besides that, man, it's, uh, I got the album coming out. I probably dropped that in fall. That's gonna be third person. I've been sitting on that album like three years. You know what I'm saying? Like just revamping it, and I kept, you know, every time I, I take a, I take a, a, a good time off, something might happen. Like some always come up. So I just say, man, let me just take my time and knock it out, put it out in the fall. You know what I'm saying? But um got that coming out, so y'all stay tuned to that because uh I'm bringing that heat on that. You know what I'm saying? So y'all gotta understand. I got a lot to get off my chest, so I'm gonna let y'all know what's happening. Say no more about it. We're looking forward to hearing it. And um could we hear any like other true features like you know, I know there was um Jay Lyric and C and, and a, a lot of us. Could we hear um any more features? I mean, pretty much like you know, in that situation I'm I'm doing it. But like I said, with um, you know, if, if I know if y'all know me, I know I was on, I was like on three, three or C album, like in the beginning of when he came home the second time he came, uh, two thousand, two thousand seven. Um, so we recorded a lot, man. Like we had so much un unreleased music, it was crazy. Like you know, we was doing a whole compilation, and okay. um, we got so much unreleased music, and it was just like, you know, right now it's dated. You know what I'm saying? So. It don't really make sense to put a lot of it out, but yeah, at that time, we was, we was moving, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, a lot of people, you get a lot of things, um, you get a lot of things mixed up, you know, so like a lot of people get a lot of timelines and stuff, because right. they don't know who, yeah, who this person is and what timeline is. I saw you do an interview with Crazy, and um, Crazy, you know, like I say, he be off on a lot of timeline and what you know so I, that's why I said something so I'm like man I gotta fill you in because you know I was out there around the time you know what I'm saying so I can fill in a lot of the holes that, that, that that's being told about this person or that person because we, people that actually hunt around us we knew we knew everything you know what I'm saying and a lot of them not here to talk to us right now so I'm one of the last people that, that was in that circle you see what I'm saying so you gotta understand we didn't we ain't do too much meaning. We did we dealt with our surf. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, so that's why I say about um if we talk about it, I need to talk about it. And um I don't care if you know if a person feels some kind of way about it, but crazy man, look like, like hey, with him and Slim, it was more like hey, we knew what was going on around that time. You know what I'm saying? Like crazy is lawyer to Pete. Period. We always knew that. You know what I'm saying? So we always knew not to say so much around him. You know what I'm saying? Because we knew when he came around, most likely you going to go back and tell him something that, that we've done in the project or something. You see what I'm saying? So I got to put that out there. You know why? Because I don't like when shit get out there the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, Slim is my people. That's like people, people. You know what I'm saying? We grew up together. Magnolia Slim. You know what I'm saying? So... I got to, I got to speak for him. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't, he wasn't around around that time. You see what I'm saying? He wasn't, it wasn't, a, it, it wasn't there when he was broke. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't around when I was bringing him to the show and getting started trying to get his name out there. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I got to say something. But now you're talking to the original. But a lot of people don't want the original people to talk because you expose a lot of shit. <laughs> and that's real shit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I see him they ain't really fucking with him. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever he did, that was between you and him. And but at the same time, you, you must have said something. And like I said, we put you on something else. Um I, I was locked up in what that was, 2002. So if you anything, if you know when Slim did his first song and um, you know, he, he did his little shot. You know what I'm saying? It was a it was a song that was released that that they released that was coming back at Slim. You ain't know that. I didn't know they put one out. You had a, you, yeah, you had a clapback song. You had a you had a song that came back. 
to Slim. To make Slim come back, which you ain't crazy. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. You see what I'm saying? So crazy. I don't think they even know I know about that song. Because I was locked up in uh in Hunts. I was in Hunts in Bad Rouge and the song played on Bad Rouge radio. You see what I'm saying? So we got our headphones and shit where we listen to our radios and shit. So I heard it on the radio. So when I heard the song, yeah, I'm gonna tell my people. I made sure I called back home and look, man, look. Hey, they put a song out. I know he heard the song. You know what I'm saying? So that's what made him come back with that. You ain't crazy. You know what I'm no saying? Man. That's some history that nobody, nobody knows about. Because Master P and uh, Crazy made a song that was clacking back at him. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, <laughs> you don't want to do that with Slim because Slim know how to, he know how to copy up in the song. Okay. So that's did, what he do. Did they pull it from the radio quick then or something? I mean, it just, like I said, I ain't hear it no more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know, like, once I heard it that one time, I, I made my phone call, I told him, and I ain't hear nothing else about it. Like, I ain't hear nothing else, I ain't hear the song no more on the radio. Man. But maybe they didn't get any game momentum like they wanted to do. Uh, uh, whatever context that happened, but I know he called, he called Willis that shit. So if Slim hear that shit. That, that's why I lost that mouth. Yeah, he went off you know on that. Um, he went off on that. You went crazy, and you know he did have a couple other tracks before. I mean, the internet crazy now because there's some songs that I've kind of heard, and you know I ain't gonna say too much. That I've heard a few little shots and stuff thrown at, but um, there's people on the internet now doing like you know YouTube videos and saying you know this silk shot, this silk song was a was a was a soldier slim this or this song was a, you know. Oh I'm yeah, try, yeah, I'm yeah. Try to put the songs and stuff out there, but I'm like, yeah, nah, you can't not. Nah, yeah, this this was I, I don't see nothing else where it came from. That was that that song was direct. Nah, yeah, that, that was the direct. You know, like I say, that, that the subliminal. Nah, I, I don't see that being anything because yeah, because yeah. he wasn't really doing. You know, like this was at the peak, like when he first. Like I see, I stayed in the Magnolia. So when he first, you know, had this falling out, he came straight in the project. Like, he came, I was on the porch, and, you know, he smoked cameras a lot, you know what I'm saying? So when his nerves bad, he, you know, he started patting that pack, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, my nerves bad right now. I'm like, what's happening? He's talking. And he like, man, you mentioned that piece shit, you know what I'm saying? Then he was like, man, I'm about to go across the river. Yeah, I'm about to go holler at KL, you know, I'm about to go holler at uh, Mr. And, and um, that was, like, the next time he came back, he had that chain on him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Yeah, is it true? Cause there was a story like that that they say he took the old um, no limit chain and sold it and turned it into his cutthroat piece. Nah, I can believe that. You know, I can believe that because we all we all done done shit like that. Like you know, I can believe that. I made an M11 piece out of another piece. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> yeah, I mean that's just what you do. Like I yeah, mean yeah. that's my shit. You know, you, you don't own shit, but you gonna take it off my neck. You know what I'm saying? So if I got it, some on my neck, yeah. He, that's something to do, and that's he was he was passionate about that, and he wanted to start his own label. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, when he came with it, yeah, you gotta, uh, yeah, he he did that. <laughs> you feel me? Because he's supposed to do that. You own that. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you put your work in with a label, and this this is another place where he, uh, I see crazy fumble that was uh, when he was talking about when he put the uh, I think the streets made me. That came out through Southwest. Southwest. You know, Southwest yeah, who, uh, who P was dealing with. And uh, he didn't like that shit. Like, he didn't like the fact that he put him out, you know, you know, he felt like it was local. Like, who the fuck Southwest is? You know what I'm saying? Because he wanted to go through priority, but the business they had going on with priority, like, he was already dealing with priority. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. That's how I be knowing a little in-depth type shit because priority was going through some shit at the time. It's you see what I'm stuff, saying? Yeah, yeah they was going to do some other shit. It had nothing to do with, you know, with, with Pete, Pete. You know, you got to also understand this. If you got any type of business that you're doing with any person, right, just like I got Pete, you can't solely blame Pete for everything because he can get fucked over too. Yeah, yeah, priority. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you got to think about that. Like, niggas don't, they don't go that far and think thank you to it. Like, all right. So, they had situations too that made him change all that shit over. And be like, I'm doing my own thing. But, um, yeah, so I can say that. I can say I respect him to the point where 
I respect his business mind. I respect yeah. Pete business mind. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, when you got some, when you got soldiers out there as willing, as willing to take a bullet for you, you know what I'm saying? Like really put they put it on the line for you. You supposed to show that back. You supposed to reciprocate. That. Period. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's what a lot of a lot of them artists heard about because they're expected to at least get some type of reciprocation. You know what I'm saying? Like you were just you just made a decision and you moved on, and that's what made them feel upset. You know what I'm saying? So that's I can't blame them for that. But like I said, I could talk so much about it because I wasn't with them. Nah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We had a different deal. You talked about Cello. Cello had a different type of deal on it. He was signed as an artist. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta understand, it was different. You know what I'm saying? He didn't need, like we had our we had our own money. You know what I'm saying? So when we had our own money, we did what the fuck we wanted to do. Pretty much. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Nobody we had nobody to answer to. We ain't had nobody to tell us where we could go and where we could be at. We was there. And that's what a lot of artists couldn't, you know, a lot of them couldn't understand because they were trying to figure out what kind of deal Marcelo got. You know what I'm saying? Marcelo got this deal, and you know, they're looking like, damn, man, what, you, what kind of deal you got? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So we just like, man, look, we doing us. You know what I'm saying? We had trucks, man. We had tough guy one, tough guy two, tough guy three. We was doing us. And we had the streets. And that's something that nobody can ever, ever say about us. Man, we... We had the street. You know what I'm saying? If you had to do anything, you had to go through tough guys. You see what I'm saying? So we had to respect that. You know what I'm saying? So we had both sides. Like you had cash money, you had no limit, and you had tough guys. You know what I'm saying? We didn't, we didn't pay on each, on either side. You know what I'm saying? So we paid the we paid the middle. We paid the fence. You know what I'm saying? And whatever we cash money want, that. Yeah. If baby comes, you know, he want to talk. We can talk to me. We can talk to who we want because we're not obligated to nobody. You see what I'm saying? So I kind of, I mean, you know, I enjoy that time, man. Yeah, yeah, no, but, definitely. Uh, I, and I think Marcelo, just to mention, tough guy, he was a great new addition, you know, with what he brought to the tank in the 504 Boys album. And his own album, you know, it re, I think it reignited with a lot of steam again at that point, you know, just, um, for people to get that that real sort of street music and stuff um you know and it was covered with features as well you know crazy everybody was out there sam di i think sam papa and all them was out there you know uh, yeah papa i mean you know all the official ones man like yeah, you yeah. know we knew the we knew the hard hitters was on the album mac man, so. that, that album was smoking mac, mac. Damn. yeah mac was was the one man and um like i said all the all got on there i mean that, it, it was so easy because all you do is like man you see him in the neighborhood and be like, man, look, we gonna get you on this song. And nigga, let's make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening right there. It's happening the next day on that same night. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, we were blessed to be in that situation, man. And then, like I said, it was it was a learning experience. I also heard I heard King say that. And uh, I got respect for King for that. Because he said, you look at it as being no limit in the universe. Like, you know, you go there, you get, you get in debt, you know, shit happens. You know what I'm saying? So I can say I can understand that. You know what I'm saying? So that gave me a different version on how I should take. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, P's always said it's like no, no limit university, and um, people can come in and, and you know get the knowledge and stuff, and um, you know go then go on and, and you know take it and, and do what they need to do with it. So, but the slant that you put on or come from Fiend, you know that's that's two sides of the coin right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you mean. You gotta respect that coming from him, man. Like man, you gotta respect that because man. you know, like you know, you'll get somebody side where they'll be, you know, they'll be mad about something. But he, that's a real humble dude. Like that's a real humble dude. Like he found his own weight. Like regardless of what happened in the past, he still found his own weight, and that's the same way I'm going. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like I got my own thing going on. Like you know, I got shit going on with trucks and shit. I deal, I deal with the trucks and shit. So. Okay. That's how I, 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 you know, that's how I get into. You know what I'm saying? So I found my own way, but by going through that, you learn the business a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So that makes you more business mind. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, of course, a lot of people took that. Man, you know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of people that that got stuck. You know what I'm saying? And like, shout out to and all right, people to Mr. Mac. You know what I'm saying? Because you know he one of the people that you know that was real influential with a lot of things in the music, but 
You know what I'm saying? He wanted to, you know, you want to see them do better. You know what I'm saying? And that's that that's one of the situations that you ain't did. You know, this is what a lot of rappers gotta deal with. Let me tell you what they gotta deal with. When you in the neighborhood or you in New Orleans, you gonna always get somebody asking you certain questions. They're gonna ask you, you know, man, man, well, man, well why you why you doing this, man? Why you got a job? You know, they're gonna ask you shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So Yep. You know that that deal with people mentally. That deal with them mentally. When you, one one day you was on top of the world, the next minute you, you got a job trying to you know trying to make ends meet. You know get this, even that here you get the same people see. Oh you oh you still doing the music? That's what they say. They say oh you still doing yeah. The music? I mean don't you deal with your boy in your mind? You get the fuck out of my face with all these crazy ass questions. But, yeah. uh, I mean, we're speaking yeah, of man, Magic, gotta, um, gotta, rest gotta, in peace, Magic, man, because um, Big Swole, like, to cut, yeah, he, we spoke to Big Swole not too long ago, and he said that um, he felt Magic was really on the cusp of, like, flourishing, just, you know, when he was doing the stuff with Roy Jones and Bodyhead, because he said Roy Jones was taking care of him, and, you know, really right. making sure that he had, you know, he had his money right and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that was the biggest thing, man, and, um, there's a lot of family that was around around that man. So it's like, I, again, I, I'm glad I came up in that time. Like I'm glad I came up around all that, absorbed all that shit. Cause I was like an intern. Like that's what I was. I can't. You got you got to understand. I wasn't. I wasn't no rapper. I was a, a fucking street nigga. I was a nigga that's gone. I was used to that. So he yeah. get around the music, influenced me to. You know what I'm saying? And me just getting under that man. It's like it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And just to know, we still here. You know what I'm saying? We still here holding it down, man. So, like I say, we do good, man. Yeah. Well, I yeah. appreciate the interview, man. Like I say, I, I appreciate the interview. Because um, we need to do that, you know what I'm saying? No, most definitely. And I was going to say, before we wind out, you know, it's years later now. And like we said, we're going back, you know, in an epoch period of 20 plus years. But uh, we always get the guests to answer, I should say. Their top five New Orleans artists. So, um, yeah, back then, man, it's like, all right, life with that. You know what I'm saying? That's automatic. See, murder. Um, BG, you know, Chopper City. Uh, it's all on you, but I didn't want into. Like, I mean, you got too much music coming out of there. Uh, you got Mystical. He had Unpredictable. Fiend. The Fiend in every, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Max. <laughs> We got we got too much talent flourishing down there, man. So I listen to every, all that. I listen to every like I see. I listen to both sides. So I like Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? So we all we all knew each other, man. So yeah. it was it was a blessing to even be around all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I so could imagine. Yeah, you, you was right there because even as a fan, you know, we was able to. Um, I ain't like one of them no limit fans that didn't listen to Cash Money or that, and I, you know, I'm up to like the Cash Money stuff as well. So, well, uh, you know, you be that there, it's a whole different experience. I'm, I want to start covering maybe not too much, some of it, maybe some other Cash Money stuff on the channel and some Death Row stuff and some other stuff too, and that, you know what I mean? So, yeah, maybe, man, you gotta, you gotta do that, man, because it wasn't, if, if you understand this, you understand that, um, you know, you know, we you know, uh, Marcelo had got big on song. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? On that second album. That and, second um, the album's crazy, man. Yeah, we did something, yeah, we did something that never been done before. Because they really thought that it was a, you know, like a real street beef going on with the No Limit Cash Money thing. And actually, it was just more like, um, I ain't gonna say it was a misunderstanding, because like I said, it was just what it was. For us being, Lawyers to who we fuck with, like me and that. If I fuck with, I fuck with Cello, I fuck with C. I'm gonna be lawyer to them. So if we in the club, I'm gonna be on this side with C. You know, I'm not gonna be on the cash money side just because that's who I came here with. I came here with with C. You know, I came here with them. So I'm gonna be here with them. So we might walk around and see each other, dash each other off like yeah. that. But you just, you just was lawyer to who the, the circle you was with. You know what I'm saying? So. When something kick off, you know, it just never happened. You know what I'm saying? Like it never got to that point. Damn. So well, you know, it got you know. So we was too, we was, we was always around each other, man. Like that had to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you know, like I see the power was that feet. We got the high power that felt like you know they had something to say about us. 
Yeah, it's crazy, man, because the thing is... And I'm going to tell you something else. I don't, care, I don't care how they feel about it. That fucking uh, Sporty T, yeah. That's my dog. Sporty T was, you know, that's the dude I came up under. Sporty T was a real gangster out there. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I look up to Sporty T. He taught me how to dress. He taught me how to do a lot of shit. Because I don't like the reason why I'm speaking on it, because I don't want people, they don't give him the, the credit he deserves. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For real. Like, he deserved more than what they're trying to give him. You see what I'm saying? And like I said, the shitty the, 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 uh, situation he had with Cash Money, that was just that was between him and, you know, the, his situation with them. But it's not going to take you away from that as a man. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, yeah. like I said, at the time, Cash Money wasn't, you know, they didn't have the deal yet. You know what I'm saying? When Forty was doing all that. And like I said, it was no limit no Philly. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't get in the video. We was at the video shoot. You see what I'm saying? With the wild boy. You feel him? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we got the video shoot. Yeah, that wild and, boy. Uh, that video looked crazy, though, man. Yeah, you know I mean? It's just the whole idea, man. It's now, right now, we talking 20-something years later. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. about to be, I'm not about to sit here and, and start shit a coping shit because you don't want this to come out. No, man, fuck that. That's what it was, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You was trying to, you was trying to fuck his, his cash money name up. You feel me? So you was in competition. That's competition. You was competitive. So you felt you had to do something to get, to get the buzz off of them. You see what I'm saying? So you did that shit. Look, you came to the video shoot and it was like, yeah, we saw what the song was about. We didn't know what the song was yet. You know what I'm saying? So we just sitting there to show love, you know? And they like, man, we heard the song. Like, man, you know, we can't be in that. Like, we ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? We jumped, we pulled up in the Range Road. We pulled up, like, yeah, it's perfect. You know? <laughs> like, you know, we didn't understand this. But, like, that's her shit, man. Like, I, I don't, it's crazy, man. And I, I, I like that to get out there, man, because it's history. Yeah, you know? no, de definitely. I don't mean, even when we did the Wild Boys um, little video, we did a bit, uh, like did the knowledge on Sporty T we could see that there's a lot of history to him just as an artist and that was just like you know a portion of his career which was um you know like I said we could look at that in rap there's a lot of rap kind of beefs and backwards and forwards um so that isn't the totality of his accomplishments or his career or what he laid down for the scene and the culture you know right yeah and then you got yeah I just you gotta give him his credit man like he yeah. did he pioneered all that shit man so I'm not gonna let him discredit my partner like that, man. Because, uh, like I see, R.I.P. is 40. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was just unfortunate you know, the event that happened to him. And um, I'm here. I'm here to carry his name. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, me, Mac, all of us grew up under him. You know what I'm saying? He pioneered him and Gregory D. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have no, you know, I'm gonna make sure I make make sure his name heard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's real, man. So, uh, most definitely, fam, uh, we definitely gonna have to get you back on at some point or any point where you got, you know, keep us updated with, like, the new releases and stuff like that. Um, yeah, man, this, this part one. Is there, is there, is, yeah, I was gonna one. say, is there any, anything else you wanna, you wanna, you wanna <laughs> drop? But I know, um, I don't think you said anything too much or too controversial anyway, but uh, I'm sure there'll be more, as you said, part two to come, man. Yeah, man. And like I said, man, I fuck about that online, you hear me? I let me, M11, true M11. Ah. Yes, sir. So, um, we definitely want to say salute. We're going to be looking out for the new album and the new projects. You know, keep us updated. You want to sh shout out your social media? Yeah, man. True true M11. Everything T R U underscore M11. And um, follow me. You know what I'm saying? My uh, YouTube channel, True M11. So, all you got to do is follow that. And I got a lot of stuff coming out, man, because uh, it's on right now. You know what I'm saying? We just need one more. We need two more people out. We need two. We need BG and we need C out. And uh, it's back on again. But right now, I just got to keep y'all got to keep y'all moving right now with some good music. You know what I'm saying? You know, you need you need some of that essence in there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm the essence of New Orleans. I'm uptown. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to get that, that real, real. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Peace, family. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on aboutthonline.com. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook for exclusive playlists 
and social media for all different types of segments and content.